Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. I'd like to talk to you about Azure SQL Data Warehouse and getting started in Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Now what you see in front of you is a default portal on Azure and we're going to go ahead and um, set up our first Azure SQL Data Warehouse database. It's not that hard, it's pretty easy. First I'm going to click on the New button. Now I can type in a search routine, SQL Data Warehouse, or you'll notice I've also got the default already set up down here, but I'll go ahead and go off with the search routine, just so we step through it one thing at a time. And it comes up and it has the SQL Data Warehouse. Now I'm recording this while we're still in preview mode, and I just wanted to have this ready for you so you can uh, get started right away. So we'll click on this, and it's going to start us setting up, and it's showing you know that it's in preview mode, um, what's involved with it, how you can set this up, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So we need a new database name. We're going to call it our first DW database. I'm going to go with my subscription account. I want to create a new resource group. You want to be very cautious about letting defaults come in on your resource groups and putting everything into a single resource group. A resource group is a fantastic management tool. It's always a very good idea to ensure that if you're setting up tests, that the tests all go within a single resource group. That way you can remove that resource group and remove all the test information. It's a great way to get started. So we're going to call our resource group DW test one. Now we can have a blank database. We can restore from a backup if we have one, or I'm going to start off with just a sample database so we can start there. Now we will have to create a server. Now remember the servers are more about managing um, this, the database is involved in them. They are not the same thing as an actual instance on your on-premises SQL Server. So we're going to go ahead and create a new one here, and we'll call it DW Test One, and that passed the names. We'll give it a login and a password. We'll pick a location. Now, because this is preview, you're not going to see all the locations necessarily, but we'll go with East US 2, that's close to me, and we're going to allow Azure services, and we'll hit select. And this is going to create a new server. Now, we can set the performance level for the levels of pricing. I'm going to go for this test purposes, I'm not doing lots of processing with it. I'm going to go with the lowest possible cost, and then I'm going to pin it to my dashboard so I can have it there available after it gets created, and I'm going to create that will create the um, resource group. It will cr create the SQL Server instance. Um, remember, the management instance. And it will create the new Azure SQL Data Warehouse database for us. And it'll take just a couple of minutes to complete. As you can see, it's now created and opened our first Data Warehouse database. And you've got it all available now. You can see that it's set up the resource group. The status is online, the location is as we defined it, it has our subscription ID, um, the server name, connection strings, all this information is there. Now we don't have the geo backup enabled yet, that's something we could set up. We can set up additional monitoring if we need to. Um, we can directly from here um, affect the scale, open it in Power BI. If uh, backups have been run, although it's a brand new database so they haven't been run yet, we can restore as needed. You can use the existing monitoring products down here to see how it's going, the total, you know, the DWU usage, uh, the data warehouse units usage, um, and the size, and then you can add other sections or other uh, monitoring thing as needed. So you can control it all from here. Now, if you really want to start to manipulate it, we want to open it up in Visual Studio. So we're going to click on that. We're going to click Open Visual Studio going to allow. We're going to open up a Visual Studio 2015. Now Visual Studio 2015 is going to open and you're going to see normal connections. Now I'm not using uh, Azure uh, Active Directory at the moment. I'm just using the normal login. So I'm going to go ahead and use this for my login. It would be the account that we set up before and we'll click connect and it's going to fail. 
And this is because the client IP address that we have currently configured does not have access to the server. Just as with Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, you're going to have to configure the firewall to allow connections for these machines. So let's go back over to here. Let's go to the server, Data Warehouse Test Server number one. And the settings are going to come up, and we'll be able to open the firewall. And from there, we'll add the current client IP address, save this. We've successfully updated our, our IP address, our uh, the firewall rules. Oops. And now we'll switch back over to connect to the server, and we will try to connect up. And now it goes through. So we've now got access to our database here. We can see the server. We can see the databases. We can see the database we created and the tables within that database. And we can begin to manipulate all of this directly through Visual Studio. Now from here, to a large degree, this is like working with SQL Server. If we were to click on the database, right click, select new query, we're going to see a query window open up and we can do normal type of stuff inside here. Take a look at say the employee table and if we execute this query we get back results just like a regular SQL Server instance. No surprises, no shocks, this is normal. From here we can create new tables, we can manipulate the existing tables, and we can more or less do what we need to do to, do to configure the system and get going with it. And you can see that we've got um, the columns are available through here. Let's go. Constraints, if any, indexes on the tables, and statistics on those indexes um, are all available through this Explorer window that you can open up and take a look. Um, if you set up Polybase, so you have external tables, you'll be able to see those as a separate thing. And um, system tables are obviously separate stuff. And you can set up security and everything that you need to set up from here. All the external so resources, security, everything can be manipulated directly through here. Um, so you can get started working inside your uh, database. That's all I have for you today. I just wanted to get you started. Um, querying and accessing your first Azure SQL Data Warehouse database. Thanks for listening. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.